welcome back. And as it always has been in this channel, we're looking at yet another cheap watch. This one's extra special though for a number of reasons. One, because it's the very first AliExpress watch that I'll be featuring here having stayed away from the platform after a not so pleasant initial purchase. Two, because it was sent in for review directly by the brand, totally for free, shipping expenses covered, making this my very first sponsored watch review. And three, because it's a beautiful piece that may have just opened me up to the possibility of giving AliExpress a second but hopefully not a third chance for the sake of this channel's future content. Escapement Time has this model listed simply as a Quartz VK64 Movement Chronograph Watch 38mm. Not so typical, but at least that designation, plus a good photo, gives me all I need to know, and one I actually prefer over the more common mix of seemingly random letters and numbers. And having this watch in my hands, I'd have to say, that designation and those photos, which are real photos and not digital renders by the way, from the product listing are indeed accurate. To be honest, I'm having a hard time moving on with this review without sounding like someone who's been given a free watch. Let me try by laying down the facts. It's obviously a vintage chrono inspired timepiece, which I love. It comes with an all stainless steel construction, sapphire glass, 50 meter water resistance rating, and fairly regarded movement, which most of us would love. It has mid-sized proportions that are very much in line with the watches that it clearly draws inspiration from that are apparently ideal for its dressy application and that guys with skinny wrists like mine would love, all for around $100, which all of us would love. I told you sounding objective was hard. Please just take my word that the brand had no influence on everything I'm about to say in this review except for the mention of a product link which I've included in the description section below. Let me also take this time to ask for your support to the channel, leaving a like or a comment does help a lot. It's undeniable, this watch is heavily inspired by the chronographs of the mid-century. All the big brands have at least one in their vintage catalog and as of late, have been coming up with very close reinterpretations of those classics. I'm not sure if it is this rising favor for all things retro in and out of the watch community that has encouraged several micro brands to follow suit. Or could it be the availability and the practicality of the Seiko VK64 and other similar movements that attracted the emergence of such tributes to vintage chronos? In fact, in my research for a particular model, Escape in Time may have reference for this design, this one came across, the Nero Sabia by Ferland Mari. It's a near identical copy, even using the very same movement. The extreme likeness got me wishing that I could put both watches side by side to find out why the Swiss micro brand cost about 6 times the watch we have here. Typically, I'd have an issue with that, owning a watch that's basically a clone of another, and that apart from a bad experience with a seller on AliExpress in the past, has kept me from buying what others may include in their definition of an homage. I've got nothing against those who think otherwise and definitely see the value in those watches from a technical perspective. I do have exceptions to that personally imposed ethic though, which again are purely personal. I would happily wear an homage to a watch that's no longer in current production, ideally of horological significance. I'd rather have a vintage inspired Baltic, Mercur, Baltany, Vario, or this escapement time get the attention of a fellow watch enthusiast and possibly start an interesting chat than be sized up by anybody by the Rolex or Tudor clone on my wrist. Again, this is a personal issue and I mean no offense to anyone. Now a closer look at the star of the show, or at least what draws me into this type of watches in general. We have a very traditional sector layout with concentric circles breaking up the dial space into three regions of essential markings. Starting from the very center, we see the effective use of blank space allowing the dial to breathe in spite of all the detail being presented and drawing attention to a pair of highly polished leaf style hands and a needle type pointer, each perfectly extending to their corresponding fields. Branding is very minimal. I'm not a fan of Escapement Time's logo design, feeling that it doesn't belong on some of their other watches, particularly on a diver. But I honestly think the cursive font works here and is nicely proportioned with every other detail on this dial. Between the 4 and 5 o'clock markers, we see China written in the same style. Other than slightly disturbing the symmetry of the innermost sector in my opinion, I have absolutely no issues with that. 
In fact, I respect how the brand takes pride in its origins and something I would like to see more from other brands in AliExpress. Moving out, we get into the hours, marked by Roman numerals for 12, 3, and 6, with bars for every other. Right next to that is a circular minute track, again with bars for every minute, shorter gradations in between, and arabics every fifth. On the outermost part of the dial are values corresponding to heart rate to be measured as beats per minute by this watch's primary complication. Everything is printed in gold over a deep black dial and I'd have to point out that the precession is pretty impressive, especially if we take this watch's price into account. Again, I'd be interested to put this against a Ferlan Mari or maybe a Dan Henry in this aspect. But still, legibility can be an issue, which I think can be remedied by either increasing the dial size, which I won't personally favor, adding a few applied markers on the hour sector, which together with the solid steel hands and sub-dial at 9, would make the dial too cluttered in the center I suppose, or by setting everything on a black enamel dial for extreme contrast, which will surely put an additional cost, but one I would most likely consider. At 9 o'clock, we see a recessed sub-dial in a matching gold tone, which effectively adds depth to what could have been a rather flat and dull surface. The grooved concentric pattern radiating from the center not only works well with the sector theme, but also generates a play of light that gives the watch a more premium look. A printed minute track with arabics on the inside to mark every tenth minute and familiar bars halfway, and a matching leaf style hand further ties the design altogether while adding the functionality of a 60 minute timer to the watch's primary design as a pulsometer. All of that under a slightly domed sapphire crystal, which while being impressive at this price point, is something I would willingly trade for a domed acrylic. I won't get everyone to agree here I know, but in my opinion, this watch can easily pass as a restored vintage piece if not for the characteristic case that goes around the edge of a sapphire crystal. We have a multifaceted stainless steel case with mostly polished surfaces, except for the sides which are brushed, as well as the narrow step on the very top of the bezel. Finishing is very impressive for the price with very sharp transitions between those distinct facets. The attention to detail continues as we take a closer look at those pushers. High polished edge all around, sharply transitioning into an intricately embellished side. Again, executed way above what I was expecting for the price. In between those pushers is a really good sized unsigned push-pull crown. It feels so good to grab a hold of that it made me wish this watch came with a mechanical movement. Pulling it out, there are two distinct clicks with the time adjustment happening on the furthest position. The VK64 does have a date complication at 3 o'clock, but I'm guessing the date wheel may have been removed here cause turning the crown in the first position does not give any tactical feedback. I just thought this fact was worth sharing but it doesn't bother me at all and I'm sure a date window wouldn't fit well in this style. Turning the watch over, we have a screw-on stereo case back brushed in the middle, with high polished facets that if viewed from the side integrate so well with the entire case structure. Here we also see drilled lugs, which of course is a very welcome detail. I must say I'm really happy with the level of finishing and not to mention the size of this case. If there's one thing I could modify, that would have to be those lugs. I wish they came a bit shorter, not only to fit smaller wrist sizes better, but to also narrow down the gap between the case and the spring bars. I also wish they curved down a bit more. The watch is comfortable to wear but it does tend to sit flat on my wrist rather than hug it. Doesn't stick out tall, don't get me wrong. In fact, the polished facet in the mid case creates an illusion of a slimmer profile. It just sits flat, if you get what I mean, and possibly not an issue for guys with more rounded wrists. Inside the watch is a Seiko VK64 Mecha Quartz movement, which to simplify things is literally a combination of a mechanical and a quartz. Time is kept like in any quartz watch, which is with the aid of a replaceable battery. And much like any quartz movement, cost of maintenance nor accuracy shouldn't be a concern, with the VK64 specifically rated to within 20 seconds a month. Unlike a typical quartz though, this does not have a ticking seconds hand which is both a good and a bad thing. Good cause there won't be anything to remind you of the modern movement underneath the retro dial, Bad cause there won't be anything to indicate the need for a battery change other than the time running slow. This is not my only watch so that bad thing ain't that bad of a thing for me. Now the mecha part is what moves this watch's chronograph pointers. Pressing the top pusher starts the central second hand which as you can see kind of sweeps much like that on lower frequency mechanical movements. 
The hand on the subdial also starts advancing fluidly to register each elapsed minute. Another press of the top pusher stops both hands and pressing the bottom pusher instantly resets both. Alternately, those values on the outermost part of the dial enable this complication to be used as a pulsometer. To do that, simply press the top pusher to engage the central seconds hand, start counting 15 pulses from the point that it hits the zero marker, then press again to stop. The needle should then be pointing to a value that corresponds to heart rate reading in beats per minute. The watch came with this strap. I'm no expert with leather so I can't say anything about its grade, but it is a bit on the lighter side and feels unusually supple to be 100% genuine in my opinion. Well, at least the shade of page does go really well with the gold tones on the dial and the flat grain texture on the upper side does give it a look that seems to coincide with straps and watches from the era it pays tribute to. Plus, it does come with a substantial buckle and quick-release spring bars. I'm certainly not keeping this on for long, not that I hate it. I'm just not a leather strap type of guy and I really can't get my eyes off that considerable gap between the strap and the case. Finally, onto the box that it came in. This had to wait till the very end because it's of least importance in my opinion, especially with watches at this price point. But if you've made it this far in the review, I'm thinking you're seriously considering buying this watch to care about other details like packaging and shipping, so I'll go through those quickly anyway. Basic cardboard box, lined with a cutout foam on the inside, enclosed in this air cushion envelope, and again protected in transit by a thick outer carton. Mine arrived in 12 days without a single dent on the box. So would I recommend this watch? If you are into the overall vintage styling, I can see any reason not to. Perfectly sized all steel case, sapphire crystal, 50 meters of water resistance, reliable movement. It's a really well spec watch that's practical enough for daily use. Something that can't be said about real vintage pieces. The level of finishing and attention to detail is simply superb. If this represents the quality that you get from escapement time, then the popularity of their Flieger among watch enthusiasts come to no surprise and is a watch that I'm definitely featuring here very soon. Once again, I'd like to thank Escapement Time by encouraging you to check out their store on AliExpress. Links to this watch and to their famous Flieger are listed below. If you'd like to see more reviews of affordable watches, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching this video and hope to see you in the next.